Good morning, ladies. That's right. We are launching a brand new show, the Women Talk Show. And what is that all about? As you know, we used to have the rising grind and we discussed all sorts of all sorts of topics, but I wanted to put a little bit more focus on our membership, the Women Talk membership. So that is what the Women Talk Show is going to be about. My name is Bridget Lissardiel and I am CEO Squared of Women Talk. Now, I am so, so excited with what we're doing here at Women Talk because we are in the golden age of storytelling. If you want to grow your business, if you want to be successful, it's not about information anymore. Information is not enough anymore. You need to be a storyteller and not just some crappy little story about something irrelevant. We need to hear your personal story so that we know what you do, what you are about, what you stand for, and then we want to do business with you. So that's why I'm super excited because the women of Women Talk, the Women Talk members understand this and they are absolutely fabulous. And you must meet every single one of them. But before I bring my first guest at the Women Talk Show, the very first Women Talk Show, yay, 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 I want to bring the most important person of the Women Talk company, and that is CEO Squared. Yeah, there's two of us. Another CEO Squared, Nancy Seeger. And... Oh, it's coming. It comes up in a second. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, everybody. Good How to be you? here. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Are we ever busy, aren't we? <laughs> you see are these you bags? Have you seen these bags? They're like, ah. Yes. Yes. We are, we are very busy right now. So the main thing that we're working on right now is <laughs> our convention. Um, it has been... Uh, oh, there she is. There is our convention. Now, let me see if I can make this work the way I want it to work. Yeah, no, it won't. But you can see it here. And it's also in the comments below. Um, we have been working very, very hard putting this convention together. As always, it is going to be intense. That's the word I like to use for it. Intense when you laugh. Intense when you cry. Intense when you learn. I like to think of it more as magical. Magic is my word this year, but and it came from some of our speakers last year, Laurie and Sydney, and the magic has continued to happen in the last year. And so for me, Women Talk Convention is always magical. And you know that it, magical is a great word because there's something really special that happens when you spend the weekend with a bunch of other people that are in the same frame of mind as you. Well, and even if you're not in the same place, business wise or personal wise, there you just find so many levels of connection. You know, they're, they're like you say, you laugh, you cry, you share. There's just so many levels of connections and you will find them overlapping more and more. As women, we need those tribes and we need those connections. So it, it's so critical for our mental and psychological and just spiritual well-being. Oh, I know. I just and I love it. Like, I mean, <laughs> when the weekend is over, I am just like... <sighs> That's because you've been vibrating for three months. Like I've been, you just vibrate for months working up to it. I know. Poor Nancy has to put up with me now. Like I get so excited about stuff, and she's always like, "Okay, whoa, wait, 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 wait." wait first there's this, and then there's this, and I was like, "Oh, I don't care about that. I'm just excited." It's hard to not dampen the excitement and still get the work done, but yeah, it, it has to happen there. Yeah, and, and I'm really excited because, well, this weekend, so I'm having meetings, right? Because as you know, we always have a kick-ass opening ceremony that just like, just starts it off. It's going to be so <laughs> much fun. I'm so yeah. excited about, and every year I panic because I wonder, oh my God, what am I going to do this year? What is it going to look like? And um, yeah, we always find a way to make it happen. 
these things come together. These things come together. All right. right now, like in some of the details, it's funny how they come together because like, you know, some of the things that we're doing this year at the convention were because of other events we've been to or other things we've seen or other experiences throughout the year. And it was just like, you see it and you go lights on, got to have that. Right. I know, like we're not telling you guys, but Nancy came up with this brilliant idea that we're trying to make it work right now. And if it does, our disco party is going to be amazing. I mean, it's already going to be amazing regardless because I plan I'm going to wherever I rent all my equipment and I'm, what are the lights? I want lasers. I want disco balls. I want blinking lights. I don't know. Maybe we'll even get like bubble machines. <laughs> It'll be over the top, that's for sure. Between Bridget and Jenny, you know it's going to be over the top. Oh, and yeah, don't forget Jenny Ogilvie, who, wow. If you guys have never heard of her, she is Alberta's favorite medium. She is crazy. She is amazing at what she does. I've watched some of her uh, videos, and it's like, wow, how does somebody even know this stuff? Well, and, and I mean... I'm not as much into the medium side as the comedian side because the lady is like, you're going to wet your pants laughing at her. She is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she really, really is. So let me bring up here. Um, I got this little slide for oh, you. Oh, good, uh, a quiz. <laughs> oh, well, no, it's not for you. It's for like our listeners. So go and buy your tickets, right? So you can come for $197. Yes, one ninety seven. <laughs> How do I get close? Like, what is that? <laughs> one ninety seven. You think I would have that memorized, but I get excited and I forget. One ninety seven. We'll take you there for the weekend. Like, come on. But if you, I know now when I go to events, I always do spend the extra bucks because I want to be having the best seats in the house. I want to participate in all the workshop and all the amazing stuff going on. And that would be your VIP ticket, which is $3.97. But here's the thing, that includes your lunch and Friday night, the white VIP party and a workshop. Yeah. And, and tell us about the workshop. It's an amazing workshop with Andrea J. Lee, who is probably one of the premier coaches in Canada. And she's phenomenal. She's teaching us a new methodology to help coaches work with their clients. And it doesn't matter what you do in life. You're a coach. You're coaching your kids. You're coaching basketball. You're coaching somewhere. So learning some of these techniques are going to help you no matter what your business is. But the, the stone mapping technique that she's introducing is brand new one that she's brought back. And it's so exciting. It's it, We're going to be like the first or second time that she's shown it to the world. We'll be at Women Talk Convention at that workshop Friday night only. Friday. So get the VIP ticket, womentalk.ca slash convention. Absolutely. All right, Nancy, I want to bring go. us on board. <laughs> Have a, I know, like, I, oh, I feel sorry for you. It's like, she's probably going, what in the hell was I thinking? <laughs> I'm almost like retirement age and I get involved with this crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go do the work while Bridget has fun. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, come on now. That's not fair. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining me, Nancy. I will talk to you soon. Bye everybody. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to be talking with, oh, this is not what I want to share. These um, slides move when somebody leaves. Okay, hold on, hold on. This is like new technology, right? Because this is BeLive. That, that's their studio too. And it's absolutely amazing. But, you know, you got to get used to how it all works. Okay, so today my guest is Michelle Post. Now, I love Michelle. She became director of Calgary uh, South, Women Talk Calgary South, and she has a beautiful energy. She is into nutrition. She is into belly dancing. She is going to be talking at our convention as well. So let's bring her up so we can hear her story and what her story is all about. Good morning, Michelle. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm super. You look so, like you're having an awesome time. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the show, Michelle. You are my first. Wow. 
I can't believe that. <laughs> okay, so the show is about showcasing uh, our members. So I want to showcase you today. I want to hear your story and how you got to do what you do now. So awesome. let's start at the beginning. Once upon a time, there was a five-year-old girl that... <laughs> That's interesting because uh, my five-year-old self, um, my family always called me Shelly or Shelly Belly because at five years old, I'd walk up to every stranger, lift up my shirt and say, tickle my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> Not much has changed, has it? <laughs> no, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm like so happy I have my dear darling husband because he loves to do that all the time. So <laughs> That is a great to tickle my belly. I love <laughs> that. So, you know, people call me Shelly Belly. That's what I was known for growing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hysterical. <laughs> she, really? So how was your childhood? Um, I cannot say that it was the best childhood um, for myself. Um, boy, um, I was the middle child uh, in a family of three children. And my brother and I are like Irish tw twins. I think we were at um, uh, 12, under, under 13 months apart. And uh, then my sister was born and my parents were very young. So they did not know how, like my mother, I think was 19, just like she was 19 years old when she had my brother and she was 20 when she had my sister. And by the time they wanted to be actual parents, they started discussing, discussing having another kid out pop my sister. So they were ready at that time. And um, there was different treatments of the different children within the family. So we all have our issues. Every single one of us have our issues about how we were treated. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it was difficult for you. Uh, yeah. So tell me the journey from there to getting into nutrition. Like, did that cause eating disorders for you because of your childhood, or how did how did that all happen? I could eat anything I wanted. Um, I was skinny. I was five foot nine at that time, and I was uh, skinny. I was like one hundred and eight to one hundred and ten pounds up until I was about thirty two years old. Um, so I ate and ate and ate whatever I wanted. But I actually, uh, because of the lack of support, like, and this is what I found out, I was uh, diagnosed with something called Crohn's disease when I was uh, just shy of my twentieth birthday. And for people who don't know, I just like to get on the same page. Basically, there's um, holes, punctures, or whatever you want to call it, leaky gut syndrome. It's um, uh, irritable bowel disorder, um, uh, infl inflammatory bowel disorder, pardon me. And um, I don't absorb nutrients from my food. It just goes straight out my body. And so when I tell people, you know, they say, well, that doesn't sound so bad. And that's actually the response I got. One of the responses in my family was, you're lying. You're making it up. Um you know, that's not even a real disease. And I'm going to go to the doctor and find out what a liar you really are. So when I say I wasn't supported, I mean, I was not supported. And that, and that kind of showed because you know, when I tracked the amount of bowel movements I had, I had about 38 a day. Um, and eight of that was 38. Yeah. yeah. How do so you even sleep? There is no sleeping. There's, I woke up eight times a night to go and have a bowel movement. So I had a lot of, um, um, issues with sleeping with uh, like insomnia and then of course massive amount of depression and not having any support so um i developed all kinds of different uh issues with paranoia and like believe it or not you like you know me now can you believe that i actually even developed a social anxiety disorder for the longest time wow <laughs> like, and, and where did where did that all come from um well for myself like we all have genetic weaknesses so my genetic weakness was in my my gut um and for me it was just the inability to handle confrontation at that time i i took everything so personally um because as you can see like for myself i really felt that my family was out to get me and uh, so i had a lot of paranoia in that and um it just caused a lot of like a lot of people you may recognize that when you have a confrontation that kind of comes out of the blue and your stomach drops but usually like you can hold all your in contents in <laughs> mine dropped and there was no in there was no contents there was no floor so literally not feeling supported in my stomach and in my life so um and then with having all the nutritional deficiencies that go along with not absorbing food um yeah the wow the amount of depression that i suffered with <laughs> so so how did you get out of that what what was wow. that pivotal moment that made you take a different route 
Well, it was interesting because my journey to nutrition was actually fraught with um, um, uh, a lot of life coaching. So I did a lot of my own self ownership and um, I did my own work on myself a lot. Like I am actually excellent at um, coming up with a win win. Oh my gosh, Shauna, thank you. You're awesome. Shauna is wonderful too. So thank you, Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> <It is>. So <laughs> I did a lot of my own. There was one specific book that I had read called The Disease to Please. And basically, um, my family did not like me. And even to this day, they tell me terrible things. There's certain members in my family tell me that I should still go off and kill myself. And um, I mean, it's just it's absolutely nasty. So I've actually had to get rid of all the toxic family. But in the disease to please, what I found is one little passage that they had one paragraph that said, um, I want you to imagine that your inner, not your inner child, but your actual child is sitting in front of you and they did something that you didn't like. Would you talk to them the way you talk to yourself? And I said, well, no, because that would be abusive. And then it went, oh, <laughs> I'm being self abusive and that is not okay. So um, it took me a long time to stop over pleasing everybody else, doing everything for everyone else to prove that I have a right to be here in this world. It took me a long time to stop making everything for everyone else. And um, oh boy, uh, when I stopped doing everything for my family is when um, I my relationship really just went down. They they the only reason why they were tolerating me in any way whatsoever was because I was doing things for them. So wow, yeah. Um, so if you have to give one piece of advice to anyone who's kind of on a similar journey to help them get out of it, what would it be? Wow. Um, of course I'm a talker so I can talk for hours. It's really to my biggest vengeance and biggest thing in the world is personal self growth. Grow yourself first before you start to grow others. Um, really, really super important to know and to be okay with what flaws are and um, start working with people that are positive influences towards you and what your goals actually are. And it can be really hard to release people that have meaning to you. Really, really super hard to do that. Um, at the end of the day, though, I mean, it's years later, and I am now surrounded with like you and magnificent amount of wonderful people that yeah. Um, help bring me more joy so I can actually live in my own authentic self where I didn't I couldn't do that before being surrounded I, so, I, th I agree with you I think you need to clean your diet and you need yeah. to clean your surroundings when I clean the surroundings of my life and the toxic people that's when the whole nutrition aspect started to come and it wasn't before believe it or not it was on the fertility journey which um <laughs> fixing and working with the whole idea of leaky gut and Crohn's disease and such um, that my body was able to start assimilating the nutrients um, that it needed in order to maintain. Um, well, there's certain nutrients out there that believe it or not are antidepressants. And, Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> No. So um, there was what I had uh, one time, something I would call uncontrollable crying fits. And for two weeks, I was working as a legal assistant. For two weeks straight, I would go to the office and I would bawl all day long. Like, I couldn't stop crying and I didn't know why. And even I knew this isn't right. This isn't normal. And when I finally was into the nutrition aspect, and I found that one of the nutrients, if there's a depletion of it, can actually cause uncontrollable crying fits. Oh, and what is that? It's called tryptophan. So you would recognize tryptophan in Turkey, you know, when everybody has their big, beautiful turkey dinners, and then after dinner, they're exhausted, and their hands are down their pants, and they're, you know, they need an hour before they can go for a walk or anything like that. So if you're um, crying a lot, you should eat more turkey? You should eat turkey, but you should make sure you digest it first, too. So that's that's a whole other realm, right? You gotta, <laughs> so I went out and that's I That's why everybody's so happy at Thanksgiving time. We're right. all eating turkey and Christmas. You sleep well, you know, you do just wonderful things when you eat turkey. So, 
I, I went out and I got that tryptophan as a supplementation and as an antidepressant instead. And uh, it was able to get me right off of all antidepressant medications. And um, again, it's something that you don't have to take forever. It's just, uh, you know, you take it until your body stocks up on it and then you're golden. And uh, it was night and day, like the next day, like, I'm not crying. Why am I not crying? You know? Now, if you guys have any uh, um, question about food, post them in the comments and we'll see if Michelle can answer you and help you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the company you're involved with now and your company and how you now help people. Well, I do it on several different ways now, director at Women Talk. So I love, I love, love, love helping women get up there and share their stories. And I'm always, always so honored. Um, I also have what I've researched in all the different programs out there for nutrition sake and health sake called Metabolic Balance. And this one is absolutely specific because it is, it teaches um, balanced plating. So it's not a restrictive, it's not, we don't call it a diet, it's actually a lifestyle where it actually teaches what the exact food nutrients are for each person. And it's based off of a doctor's blood requisition. Like I literally have a doctor's blood requisition that I give to my clients. They go to uh, Calgary Lab Services and then all those, the blood parameters are drawn and a, a host of uh, doctors, nutritional doctors from Germany, choose the exact whole foods based on the nutritional deficiencies of that person. Mm. So everyone within the first two weeks I've had people that do suffer with depression and a lot of it has to do with glycemic issues in the blood and uh, as soon as the first two weeks they're like wow I can handle situations I never thought that I could before well share a story with us share a story of one of your customers oh well um, I just I just had one just seriously she's just suffered with massive depression she was very very negative uh, had a very negative uh, mindset and was always on a constant complaining list and aspect. So every time being around her, it was, it was kind of toxic. Like seriously, it was, she would not take any responsibility for herself whatsoever. And within the first two weeks of her being on it, her blood pressure completely normalized. She was on medications before. Uh, that's usually the first one to actually normalize in the first couple of weeks is the blood pressure. And uh, then all of a sudden, um, she had to start looking at the doctor to start diminishing her antidepressant medication as well, because um, she was just not freaking out any longer. So um, just balancing blood glucose can really super help, you know. So how would that work with menopause? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Whoa, I hit the that's jackpot. A good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, first of all, uh, one of the biggest complaints, of course, is the overheating of the body. Um, and and we, we could go through so many hormonal Sweet Jesus, imbalances. you need to talk to my wife. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So like the full foods themselves are usually cooling and I have so funny people who are um, normally hot. I've had run hot. I had one client that uh, in the winter time she would come over in a t-shirt and a uh, thong um, uh, flip flops and no jacket at minus 40. And she ran hot. She was hot. And I told her, when you're on the program, you're going to need a hat. You're going to get cold. And she said, no way. Okay. Go home. I got to share a quick story here. My sister-in-law. Oh, my God. That like it, She lives in Toronto, middle of the December. Like, it's 20 below, and all the windows are open. I was so cold, I slept with a fur hat. Right? Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> like, all the blanket. And I had just gotten this really cool... I don't know, Canadian fur hat of some kind. <laughs> and I slept in my big fur hat because I was so yeah. old. Well, and that's what happened. So it's hilarious because um, I told her this would happen and she said, no way, her entire life she ran hot. There's not one instance in her life that she's ever been cold. And fast forward six months later when she was over and it was a cold Canada day. I think it was only plus 11, but she had a comforter on. She had a hat on. She had an extra jacket on. She was wearing two things of socks because she was cold right so because as so she is was it really, to be hot uh no it's just overly hot like we have to get yeah to that's what i mean like is that something like you need to adjust something if you're well, always yeah there's hormones involved with that so excess estrogen inside the body and that's what the program also does is balance hormones so um not only is the cooler cooling effect but also the weight release effect of it and uh then the balancing of the hormones and 
life is good. Life is wow. Really good. <laughs> Very cool. So if um, anybody wants to find out a little bit more about Michelle, if you look in the uh, in the link here above, you'll find the link for her website. But what is your website again, Michelle? www. Oh, actually, you can go to healthnow.today. Ooh, so we have a new website. website. Yeah, yeah, it's the same website. It's pointing to the same place. Link. Yeah. Yeah, I've had to incorporate because I'm also helping holistic nutritionists and nutritional con uh, consultants across Canada write their story so we can make a collaborative book about their own journey from um, tragedy to triumph and how nutrition saved them. So, so speaking of stories, um, I wanted to ask you, how did uh, uh, being a Women Talk member and sharing your story multiple times has helped you personally and help you with your business? Um, that is awesome. Um, when I first came to Women Talk, I did it because I was, I'm a dancer and I'm a singer, but asked me to speak in front of the mic it was scary, like social anxiety, right? Give me some cigarettes and some, some alcohol and <laughs> to calm down. So it was a challenge. So I first came to break the cycle of codependence with my darling husband. We're so codependent. Um, and <laughs> that's because I, he's so awesome. <laughs> right? I know. Right. Like seriously, I love that guy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, I went and I started listening to the women's stories and I'm, 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 I'm super, awesome like I'm super awesome I am absolutely amazed um when women share their stories like I feel every single bit of it and I wanted to be there as well being an extrovert so I did apply and it took a few months for my uh, application to get in there and I had been practicing <laughs> until then in order to get it out and it was it was scary um at, and at the same time being in front of an audience of women who buy their tickets to be supportive um you just i just felt like i was in the exact right place for me i can share my stories without shame and that's what i what i realized is just get ahead of the shame and so now it's i want to encourage everyone to share their stories and understand you are in the right place you are in with the women who are going to accept you for everything that you are um wow like just wow so has sharing your personal story helped your business um, well, yeah, people, people don't know what I've gone through in order to get to where I have, um, you know, with the dancing, what the dancing has done and what nutrition has done, uh, even for myself, um, and, and people around them, like, just how do you want to see yourself when you get older? How do you want to see yourself at 80 years old? You know, I still want to see Lenny and I as that couple that everyone goes, you're 80. I, I can't believe you're not 50. You know, I want to be that couple. Like even now people don't believe I'm actually, you know, going to be 50 next year myself. So, um, super. it's a good thing. 50, like it's scary turning 50. And once you've turned 50, you're like, all right, I'm going to home. I'm going to own this, you know, <laughs> and yeah, I'm awesome when I'm 50. And, like, you know, I just had that thought and conversation in my own head yesterday because it's my golden birthday. So I'm going to do gold this whole year. Everything is golden. And the majority, Lenny. Right? <laughs> <It's gold. laughs> and the majority of women, when I tell them my true age, um, that are the same age, if not a couple years older, say, don't tell people that. Don't tell people that you're Why that not? old. And that's the thing is they carry a lot of shame about being 50 years old. And I'm like, no, man, I'm going to rock this. How can people believe that I've done such good work on myself if I don't share the reality that I'm actually 50? You know, like, how is that possible? Being 50 is magnificent. It does not have to be all doom and gloom like these other people are perpetuating. So, no, let's rock this age. Woo! Well, Thank you for sharing a little bit of who you are and why you do what you do and you. your story because it's um, it's a really fascinating one. And food is just one of those things, you know. Um, I'm personally, I've been so busy that I haven't been taking care of myself food wise. So I totally get it, you know, yeah. and I owned a gym for seven years, a, a women's gym where really it was all about people wanting to lose weight. Very few came there to be healthy, you know, yeah. I mean, they go together, but still uh, yeah. people were there to lose weight. So it's a big struggle in our society. It's, it's actually massive and it is an epidemic actually. And it does have to do with the influences of the food systems that are out there, what they put into it. It's how they, ugly. 
Yeah, it's really, it's, really. It's been very, very ugly for the last 25 years. The stuff that has been happening, it's crazy. Yeah. But we're going to change it. It's changing now. Well, with each individual person, you know, what you can do is the best for yourself and your family and those around you. Because doing the stories with all the people across Canada, one of the biggest things that hit me is the best gift you can give to your family is taking care of your own health. Um, cause there's a numerous amount of people that have not done that. And then the children have to worry as you know, you've gotten older and you're now in a home and they have to expend all this extra energy, uh, and not positive energy on having to take care of you. And you don't know the difference because you haven't taken care of yourself. However, the best gift you can give is your own longevity, your own beautiful health, your own self interest. Um, it's just the best thing you can do for everybody. So I highly, highly encourage everyone self care, self love. Wonderful. Well, we're going to end it on that word, on those words. Thank you for joining me, Michelle. And mm -hmm. uh, you can come and see Michelle at the Women Talk Calgary South and, of course, at the Women Talk Convention in Canmore. Now, Michelle, if you'd go and post your new website link in the comments, that would be wonderful. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. I love Bye -bye. it. Bye. Bye. Now, ladies, um, I just wanted to share a little something with you that um, is just getting me really, really excited is, um, you know, we really are entering in an age, uh, a, a golden age of storytelling. It, it really, really is about stories. Uh, we are no longer in the information age just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Hello, knock, knock. And um, sharing our stories is crucial. It's crucial for your success. It's crucial for your health. It's crucial for your tribe. So I highly encourage you to come and share your stories. Now, it doesn't have to be at Women Talk. There are multiple, multiple places where you can go and share your story. But Women Talk, what I can tell you is it's a place of acceptance, of love and support. It does not matter what your story is. And we do not judge. It is your story and you decide how you're going to share your story and what story you're sharing and the meaning of it to you. So come and join us. Womentalk.ca is where you find out all the information. And if you think that this is something that you would really, really, really like doing, then become a member. Learn to share your story and grow your influence because that is the way of today. It's all about story sharing. So Thank you for joining us for our first Women Talk show. My name is Bridget Lissardiel, and I hope to see you very soon, and I hope to hear your story. Bye for now.